Well, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for coming to hear about uh, Go Gold today. Forward-looking statement uh, outlining many of the risks in mining projects, which are, of course, uh, to name uh, a few, are metallurgy, uh, reserves, and uh, and many others. So it's it's it is quite important to understand the risks of the mining industry. Um, our project is in Mexico. I've spent uh, most of my career in Mexico, last 20 years, um, developing projects uh, such as Ocampo, um, uh, the El Cubo mine in Mexico, Nayarit, and uh, the latest Gold Gold. We've raised uh, about a billion dollars for our projects over the last 20, 20 years. Capital structure, 171 million shares. <clears throat> um, outstanding options, 4.8, 4.3 um, warrants. Fully diluted, about 180 million. Uh, $54 million in uh, debt um, to Agnico Eagle and uh, the Bank of Montreal. 4.5 in cash. Uh, insiders own about 30% of the company. And uh, I'll talk in a moment about that, um, the debt and the uh, deal that we announced with Agnico Eagle. So um, two projects, the Santa Gratuitous project in uh, Sonora, where we've uh, sold the project to uh, Agnico Eagle Mines. Uh, recently announced in the last two weeks, and our Peral operating mine in uh, the state of Chihuahua. So, uh, Santa Gratuitas, uh, just a real quick history of Santa Gratuitas and our involvement in the project. Um, Santa Gratuitas was uh, found in the 80s uh, by Phelps Dodge. It was developed and put into mining in the uh, 90s. It was um, <clears throat> sold to a company called uh, Campbell, operated up until the low gold prices of uh, 2000. And then it sat there until uh, 2005 and was picked up by a junior Animus Resources. We acquired Animus Resources in uh, 2014. Um, the project was uh, a little overlooked. Uh, we acquired it for $11 million, um, half shares, half uh, cash. Um, and uh, we did a, a drilling on the project. We did a 43-101 resource. Um, we did a PEA and uh, worked on it for the next three years. Um, we recently uh, inked a deal with Agnico Eagle, uh, one of the uh, premier major mining companies, of course, in the industry, um, for $80 million uh, US cash, and uh, we'll retain the 2% uh, net profit royalty, um, and they can buy back 1% of that royalty for $7.5 million. I, I see this as a real win-win deal. It's a good deal for uh, Gold Gold, and, and uh, not to speak for Agnico, but I think a real good deal for Agnico. Um, you know, we see a, there's a, a lot of upside in this project. Besides the uh, over a million ounces of resource we have today at a very good grade. Um, and just to touch on the uses of the uh, proceeds uh, before I go on to Peral. Uh, for us, it'll pay off all our debt. Um, we'll be left with about uh, $22 million uh, US in cash and uh, that 2% retained uh, royalty. So we'll have uh, leverage to the, uh, or have exposure to the upside of uh, the work that Agnico is going to do on the project, and uh, we think that's going to be very good for our, our shareholders. Um, the Peral project is our operating mine. Um, it's a very large tailings retreatment in the uh, municipality of Peral, uh, Peral about a city of 125,000 people. The tailings are a good grade for what we're doing, which is an agglomerated heap leach uh, at about 0.31 gold and about 40 grams silver. Um, the operation, it's uh, contract mining. We pick up these tailings, uh, 40 ton trucks, uh, transport them uh, 13 kilometers over to our newly built uh, agglomerated heap leach. Um, they're agglomerated with uh, cement. And um, that's one of the key factors in this operation uh, performing well. Um, I would say the startup was a, a little difficult for uh, Peral. We are really the first ones who have taken old tailings, and uh, we have a lot of them, 21 million tons, um, and uh, agglomerate them, put them out on a heap leach. So that being said, uh, a lot of the testing that you do for traditional heap leach with uh, solid rock really didn't scale up very well from column to um, actual operation. So over the last three years, we've had to, in the field, do a, a little bit of trial and error. And uh, to get to where we are now, which is uh, it being fixed, the last four quarters have been increased in production. Um, we're in the rainy season right now, which uh, traditionally in Mexico is uh, very difficult for heap leaches. 
I will tell you that um, actually we're having a better quarter than uh, last quarter or a dry quarter. Um, and I, we will be uh, double the production of last rainy season. So I, I really feel confident in saying we have it fixed. Um, and I'll go on to a few of the things we've done here. Uh, there's just a picture of the site. <clears throat> Our uh, newest heap, uh, pad 15. And um, to touch on a few of the things we've done, one thing is around the agglomeration. We're taking basically sand here and we're putting it back to a rock. And, and this, these tailings really have no nucleus to them. So it needed a lot more cement than we were originally putting in and what the testing said um, would work. And that's one of the key factors. So um, a few of the things we've done to optimize this over the last three years, um, we've increased the size of our Merle Crow. The leach curve was longer than predicted in the uh, feasibility study and the testing. So what we needed was a larger Merle Crow. So we've taken the Merle Crow from 250 cubic meters per hour up to 1150 where we are today. We've installed a SART plant, which um, recovers copper from the uh, solution coming off the heap. Um, but it also does um, something that's very critical for us. It, it gives us back our cyanide, about 80% of our cyanide. And that's the number one consumable here. Uh, lower uh, lift height. The original study said we could go up to 10 meters of lift height. Um, in reality, this thing works really good at four to five meters and uh, at uh, multi-lift. So stacking on top of those lifts after most of the metal has been removed. Um, so the lift height, um, some things like better sediment control in the rainy season, that really helped out this year. We've in, in, installed, um, uh, well, I mentioned higher cement. We've really reduced the uh, use of uh, cyanide and uh, our zinc consumption. An in interesting point here, over the last six months, what we've done here is we said, okay, it wasn't working as per the study. So we re really went back to the basics. We said, we're not gonna push tons, we're gonna push recoverable ounces. And that's what we had to, uh, the philosophy we had to implement there with our operating crew. Um, <clears throat> so the last six months, we've only averaged about 3,200 tons uh, placed, but uh, placed very, very well at a very high uh, quality of agglomeration. So what that yield has yielded, and it's reached an equilibrium at that stacking rate, is right now between 4,500 and 4,700 ounces produced uh, a day, which is the best production we've seen out of the heap. So recently, um, we've scaled up now where we're stacking about 5,000 tons a day. And over the next four to five months, we'll reach equilibrium on that, which um, would be about 50% more uh, ounces produced. So we see this uh, heap in 2018 getting up over two and a half million ounces produced at a all-in cost of about 10 bucks an ounce silver equivalent. And, and that's not taking the gold as a byproduct credit. That's a silver equivalent ounce. Um, as I mentioned before, lower lift height, We'll do a second lift on top of new material after we've extracted most of the uh, metal out of the uh, lower lift. But the residual silver will still get leaching from the uh, lift above it. But here's the real story. Um, the uh, curve, uh, the lowest curve there would be the first eight pads before we really rebooted this thing and um, it changed our operating protocol. And you can see how slow it is. And uh, in fact, some of those pads went out 36 months to recover the uh, anticipated silver. Um, but every one of those lines has been uh, basically changes we've made in the irrigation um, that we've done in cyanide and cement. And the one to the far left is our pad 15, which is the latest. And uh, the final thing we put into the tweak this thing is we allowed two weeks curing. So we'd make these agglomerates and we'd let them sit out there in the sun on the pad for two weeks and uh, make them uh, rock solid. So uh, you can see the difference in the uh, rate of recovery. It's, it's quite, uh, quite substantial. And the, that's months on the bottom and a percentage recovery on the uh, left. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, now that we've got this thing working right, uh, stack more, which we're doing now, and uh, it'll yield more metal over uh, the next uh, four to five months and into 2018. And we have a, a substantial li a mine life here. We have in the next uh, decade of uh, mining and producing here at Peral. So for us, um, we've cleaned up our balance sheet. 
with the uh, deal that we've done with Ignico Eagle, still have some exposure to the asset with the 2% royalty. Um, we've fixed Peral, it's a cash flowing asset uh, now, and um, with our delevered uh, uh, balance sheet, no debt, cash in the bank, um, we're going out to do what we've been doing all along, which is uh, looking for projects that uh, we like, that we see opportunity in, and um, that we think we can um, advance up the curve um, and do either asset deals uh, or develop in, into operating mines. So uh, with that, I'll open up to any questions if any, anybody has any. Are there any questions out there? How old are those tailings are three hundred years old or over three hundred years of mine life from an underground mine uh, that the city of um, uh, Peral was based on. Uh, they were last uh, placed there in uh, nineteen eighty so there's some pretty old tailings and they're flotation tails they've never been treated with cyanide in the past, so that's that's why they do work they recover with cyanide. I'll throw, I'll throw one at you. Would, uh, would you do another tailings project? Well, I'll tell you. Um, this one's taken some years off my life. <laughs> it, has, it has been difficult, but really, you have to go back to we've done something here that unfortunately was a bit of bleeding edge, but um, we really have figured this out over the last three years. Um, the advantage of uh, tailings the way we're doing it is low, low capex, um, low opex, and... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's working now. I, I would have to say we're the first ones who've done this, but I, I think we are the experts on it in, in Mexico. Um, I, I wouldn't say we'd never do another tailing project. There are some very, very large um, uh, tailings in Mexico that were flotation, some of them up to 100 million tons. And we've done some samplings on those, and they're, they're amenable to uh, leaching. But we have our eye on some other uh, in-situ projects that we're, we're quite interested in as well. But that'll be 2018.